2023 was definitely a year to be a Sonic fan. Just a year with many months, days, and with the last content update trailer, I wanted to get down and just talk about Frontiers, what this DLC could hold, and also go into length about the content Frontiers has received. Content that blew me away like the spin dash and the cool outfits, the tattoo update. Uh, we got... Uh, does, does it really but uh, what they did? Let's just move on from this alleged from the alleged updates that I definitely checked out. Who, who, who cares? Who, who cares? Unless you were sent to kill me, who cares? I like the idea of moving on from this subject. I predict um people will stop asking me about this like <laughs> when Superstars comes out. Oh yeah. Oh, it's gonna be insane. Oh, I'm gonna pace myself with one hour sessions each day, baby. Oh, it's gonna be goblin mode. It's gonna be goblin mode. <clears throat> it's been one year since Frontiers release and months since Sega came forward and straight up said that Sonic games are going to get bigger budgets. Now, something like that does not become organized overnight, but these two things in junction do make me think we can expect this update to be substantial. Superstars is happening, but most of Sonic team is not working on it. The Scallywags are our zest, are the main developers, helmed by Oshima, famous for, let's see, bit Bale in Wonderland. So let's think, what, what else could Sonic Team have been doing since November? Well first, definitely throwing ideas around for the next entry in the series. Maybe they even know exactly what they're doing next. And of course, they were making update one and two. Adding on that, from this interview, we do know for a fact that Sonic Team was somewhat assisting with superstars on design and so-called other elements. Maybe this tree, or Sonic's quill length, or the length of his quill hair's length. Hair. So from what we know at least, they have had almost all hands on deck focused on update 3. Also, can we talk about the quickness of this update? I don't know, man. Am I the only one who did not expect this to be released in late September? Or, you know, when they said late 2023, I figured November. And speaking of which, I hate these people. I, I hate these people. I literally wrote all, all this. And now that they released this, I can't even, I can't even use that text. I have to, like, actually form original thoughts. That's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. Anyway, I'll, I'll hurry up before they upload an in-depth playthrough just to screw with me. First of all, I don't think we should expect too much, but it's safe to expect more than a few trinkets, a new animation, a hard mode. I think like, okay, those, those are all cool things, but not CG trailer massive. Hell, this is on the level of the Game Awards reveal. That's not something they would do if it wasn't a medium to big deal. So, new level design, new multiple cutscenes, new voice lines from older characters, Space Invaders 2. Yes, another, another glorious Titan song. One more banger to add to the No One Understands Me playlist. Maybe this time, instead of Sleeping With Sirens, we get Legendary Pop Band. Infant Annihilator. It's just the more I think about this update, the the more I risk gaslighting myself into imagining things that probably won't happen. Oh, the joy of being a Sonic fan. Playable characters. That is just not something we have consistently gotten. Certainly not in 3D Sonic games. Base Sonic Frontiers didn't have it. Forces, sure you could argue did, but one of them was Sonic, one of them was Sonic, and one of them was Sonic. Shadow was straight up not different in mechanics. I'll give Forces this. The avatar was different enough that you can't quite count it as the same playstyle. Lost World, no. Generation, sh shut up, it's not. Number really just. Shut up, be quiet. Shut up. No, it's not. Colors, no. Rise of Lyric, I'll kill you. Unleash, yeah, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't think I would count it. I don't think I would count that, no. It's been sporadic since Sonic 06 where Knuckles was able to spread his big four-headed dreads and fly. Which begs the question, 
how exactly are they gonna implement these characters into the game? The man setting himself up for disappointment would say, oh, they're gonna put all these guys in the open world. Oh, oh, oh my god, everyone will get their own skill trees and, 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 and their own moves and their own animations and, and, they, and they'll put they'll, 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 Rouge, they'll put Rouge in so I can I can kiss her. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, fu I'm not a furry, but come on, it's just an achievement. It's just a silly Easter egg. <laughs> And that's totally fine for you to say as long as you're 200 yards away, but I don't think that is gonna happen. It took way too long for them to do that with one guy, but three guys, I unless they gained like twice the staff overnight, it's not happening. Not for a free update after they've already made their money back. I'd be so proud of Sonic Team if they did do that as my faith in them would be mostly restored but again I cast out. The most likely thing is that we will get access to them in every cyberspace level. Everyone who is playable on this image was a cyber spirit that tried to get into Epstein Island. Sage is not gonna be playable, she just isn't. I remember how when the game started the simpletons couldn't get through the easiest goddamn level in the game, that's exactly what I think is gonna play out, we're gonna see their perspectives and go through their cyberspaces. Tails, Knuckles and Amy will get their own set of stages. I think two each at the least, one original, one taken from a past game. Who knows, they could reach into Lost World. <sighs> Bosses, uh, colors for these levels. Also, this teaser that they released just show that Tails has a gun. Are they gonna implement that into his gameplay? I don't know, I think maybe he'll shoot it. The thing is, it does kind of put a hole into what I'm saying in that it would only be cyberspace. Also, I don't think it well, let's remember that Tails in Sonic Adventure 2 was in a mech and he was shooting things. I think it's entirely possible that his levels could be based around shooting and that it's exactly what I'm talking about, that it's only cyberspace. Also, it could be that he goes into the open world and uh, all of his upgrades and his skill trees are based on his gun. I don't know, I feel like I'm, I'm more, personally, I'm more heading in the direction that Tails' levels are going to be more based around his Sonic Adventure 2 type levels. If they do do, ha, do do, if they do do a uh, classic and uh, an original level, I feel like a classic Tales level that they take from could definitely be maybe Prison Hall or I've forgotten any of his other, I cannot think of any other Tales levels so I'm just gonna say it's Prison Hall. If you couldn't guess, I really liked Cyberspace. And to be honest, that's genuinely what I'm most excited for. Something that isn't even announced. Playing those incredible World 4 stages just left me hungry for more. Even if we don't get to use Sonic on new levels, I'm 100% fine with that. The thing is, we don't know what they're gonna do mechanically with these playable characters. Could be that everyone is nothing more than a Sonic sin with certain aesthetic differences, like how the modding community did for generations. Uh, update 3 is big, remember? Maybe Knuckles will glide, maybe Tails will fly and get stuck in the atmosphere. Amy will continue to be pink and do a thing with her hammer. If they get creative, there's a lot they can do for cyberspace, but there are other sides to this update, which is why I'm not expecting all that. I'm still on the fence about them being in the open world, but I just don't see it happening. Bar a special open world, fine-tuned for them, and much smaller trees. Only getting mainly aesthetic and light control changes would be fine for this game's end state. It's already a really good game. This is only going to improve it, no matter what they do. Although I can't deny it would be so cool to finally do those things again in 3D before they go back to the Sega prison sphere. I feel a lot of fans probably wouldn't place pressure on the next game knowing that that was fulfilled here. Again, I don't predict we will get open world, I can see it happening that whenever we find this thing, we actually get to control all four heroes in turns. Speaking of which, the bombshell of this trailer wasn't that Eggman is sexy or that we're getting a new song from probably a band named Vomitalica. It's a subtle moment you could miss where Sonic goes 
Mahiya he, Maria he, Hiya 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 he, Maria. We can all agree this is very cool. We can't all agree that this isn't entirely good for potential stories. It's understandable if you disagree. I just think power creep could be bad for any future Sonic stories in the same way hindered Dragon Ball or Naruto. Making him even stronger with these power-ups could make conflicts and bosses be resolved in a simpler manner, in the hands of a lesser writer. And I get that Sonic stories will always resolve themselves, but it will be harder for the friends to keep them in strength more than it already is, and I don't think anyone really wants to see that. Obviously, I lack context. This could be a permanent power-up Sonic has with certain limitations, or it's simply the whole cyber corruption thing that was diffused with a pat on the shoulder, expanded into what we all thought was going to happen with a temporary form akin to Feet Hog. Look close. The glow that envelops him is red. Red is a colour. That's all I can deduce. So the question is, how will this form be obtained? We'll need all the Chaos Emeralds, we'll need to bring out the power of the corruption too, but will it be used in the future? Will it be constantly requested by fans to come back for absolutely no good story reason? Yes, yes it will. In the original game, they released his corruption by touching Sonic. How would doing that in super form result in a stronger super? Will, it, will he automatically become stronger without his body being cured? They must be hiding a third element to all this. You know, something that completes the recipe that obviously they want to save for the actual release. I noticed in the recent trailer this answer could be the sphere that Tails was praying to. It's what everyone else was trapped in. So, Yank Sonic, throw him inside. They are letting him based. I'm being serious as f by the way. I really do think he's in this red blob. Not only would it make sense and that's how it becomes super red, it's also really funny. Oh, and I've got to mention having free roam Super Sonic. There's already a mod for this, but it's a fun idea that I could very well see happening. Officially implemented, Frontiers is the only Sonic game, uh, only 3D game since Unleashed to not let you use Super in any moment. Plus, of all the unrealistic things to expect, that is the most realistic feature, right? Either way, I love Sonic Team for revisiting this and giving us yet another Titan fight. It will be weird if we get a new form and don't get new moves, but I doubt that they would do that. Plus, we'll get to see another execution. Hopefully, this time we'll just break its neck like, like Hitman. Not, not even a backflip or anything, just a regular ass human execution with a sound. So, they're rewriting the story, showing a path to victory that Sage considered in her simulation, an alternative to the events we witnessed. The question is, is this gonna be on the main menu? Will it be there when you're playing through the game like a, like a choice? Is this going to be what canonically happened going forward? Well, the end result is gonna be roughly the same. This is all very different from what actually preceded. Also, judging from this, Tails, Knuckles and Amy are all gonna be very involved. What exactly they're gonna do, I can't figure out, but I assume that Sonic will be incapacitated, leading these three to take initiative, which is where your reason for fighting comes in. So despite what I said before, I guess open world control is likely. This story teaser has done a lot to excite me, and it has shown what we all expected to happen in the original game with Super Sonic. I really wasn't expecting any more information till it came out. Clearly, Sega does not want people to forget that Sonic Frontiers Update 3 is happening, even though Starfield is currently dominating the news cycle. I would be playing Starfield right now, but you know. My hand hurts. This is a superb trailer, Sega. I love that the end is ever present. You're always lurking like this constant reminder that yes, the moon is real. It's so well drawn and feels just like IDW. The whole corruption thing leads into the end coming back, and which I, I could see being much different from its original incarnation, at least story-wise, but I've always theorized 
but this isn't actually the end. It's like a cocoon. The end's true form is inside of this, and Sage's radical kickflip actually stopped it from coming out, which without the super corruption could have been too strong for Sonic. So, if I'm right, this can't be a canon DLC, because Frontiers has to end with Sage's death unless they kill her twice, which would be funny. This is gonna be a side story, not canonical. I know Sage is technically not dead because she is in murder and eventually was recovered, but still, it's, it's not the same person per se. And the moon is a Bitch. Arguably the most requested thingy, a thingy that has been a thorn in everyone's sides, is the final final boss of Sonic Frontiers, Elphine. Did you know, if you type in the end, Sonic Frontiers, redesign is like the fourth option on Google. Even Google hated it. Though Ikaruga is not what I expect when I open my Sonic game, it just isn't. Who the f plays through Sonic Frontiers and says, yeah, let's Pop this off with a round of Galaga. That's what the Sonic movie was missing. It sure is great they cater to me, an enemy to humans everywhere. I feel even Sonic Team didn't think it was a good idea, but had their hands tied. This is how rushed they were. If this was unconnected to the Sonic franchise, it would be a fine section. It's fun enough. But in the end, it's relieving this will change. Now that I think about it, I do hope. The final final boss is changing. I I don't know if they've explicitly stated that for update three. I just assumed that they would rework that. So it is possible that it stays the same. But Kishimoto flat out stated this like last year. So I feel it's essentially guaranteed. I do wonder if the old boss will stay, or or I suppose this different future could be the only one to have the redesigned fight. I, I I bet that they don't really want to remove gameplay. But the change from Galaga to Star Fox is lots of avenues they could go. But the main mechanic here, I predict, will stay. You're still gonna be shooting at the end in conjunction with Sage, but because you aren't top down, the patterns and even your own attacks must be different. There's gonna be new animations and whatnot. Maybe when you get up close, you get like a, a window to do damage, similar to Dark Gaia in Sonic Unleashed, just with more M1911. Additionally, I think there will be a second phase to this new boss. God knows what that, that could be like, but I wanna say similar the titan fights honestly maybe what's in the trailer is the thing that was hiding inside the uh, inside of the end but that seems unlikely what i can be sure of is whatever is added will be a stark improvement to whatever i'm looking at here Galaga was fine but the fight was largely carried by the music and monologue and speaking of which maybe we get a full version of i'm with you maybe sung by someone maybe elton john eh? <sighs> speaking of elton john Oh yeah, that's a good transition. I can't think of anything else that Update 3 is threatening to bring to the table. You know, it's funny, about a year ago, we didn't even know if this game would actually be good. But here we are looking at a major content update where they're looking to right some wrongs. Something that, to the best of my memory, has never happened with a Sonic game. Bar remaster? I remember a shit ton of people who were betrayed by forces and boom, uh, completely denying this game would be quality. And even, even after we saw more proof that this isn't gonna be a typical disappointment. Some people are stubborn and some people just straight up have different opinions, different tastes, and that's fair. But I do feel, you know, collectively, as, as a community, many people acknowledge they did a good job, me included. I, sh I still wish it reviewed better with critics as it's kind of baffling. It's on par or lower than Colors Ultimate. But God, to me, Sonic Frontiers delivered and it was... It was relaxing to realize it's not a bad game. I, I had fun uh, theorizing what they have in store for us, but no matter what, I hope that it's something we can be proud of for years. Something that truly brings the whole experience full circle. I'm just super glad that this was the end result. A roadmap of a free DLC, and not Sonic being pimped out and sold to Xbox Game Pass because Frontiers was a 3 out of 10 no one was willing to check out. Speaking of Xbox Game Pass, this video was sponsored